Jonathan Lee Riches, aka JLR. I am in Largo, Florida, Pinellas County. This is a site where authorities are searching for the bodies of three missing women. Three missing women. They have been digging in this area all day long. This property is owned by Habitat for Humanity. Authorities have been out here searching for the bodies of three women, possibly from a serial killer from the 70s and 80s named Cleveland Hill. Cleveland Hill had interactions with three women who went missing. Three women who went missing. Margaret Dash in June of 1974. Margaret Dash. Retha Hires in December of 1982. Retha Hires, December of 1982. And Danielle Johnson in April of 1989. Danielle Johnson in April of 1989. Authorities, you can see, I'm gonna spin the camera around. They've been digging, they have cadaver dogs, canine units in the area. They've been digging up this property all day long they have a tent here they're taking a lunch break now and it looks like they're going back at it shortly looking for any clues of these three females late 70s 70s and 80s this is a Nellis County crime scene truck they are here Cleveland Hill did Cleveland Hill dump bodies here? Did Cleveland Hill dump bodies here? I'm out here to wait to see if they uncover anything. This is Pinellas County, Florida, Largo, Florida. Right over here, Gooden Crossing and Railroad Avenue. Gooden Crossing, Railroad Avenue. This whole area has been dug up. Now this property is next to a church. Church right there. And this is a property that is owned by Habitat for Humanity. And they had plans on building homes here. Three affordable homes. Three homes were gonna be built here. Now, check out some of these videos and clips that I took while I've been here all day. The, a representative with Habitat for Humanity spoken about the situation here. And one of the victims, one of the victims spoke here. So victims are out here waiting to see if anything gets uncovered. This happened in the 70s and 1980s. Will they find bodies here? Will the family get closure? Remains to be seen. I am out here checking the scene out. Check these clips and footage out of the area. Margaret Dash, she 
disappeared in 74. Danielle Johnson, she disappeared in 85. All three women have a relationship with one man, and all three women disappear. Were they all from the Largo area? All, two from Largo, one from Clearwater. And what happened to that man? He died. Who, who was that? What was his name? Cleve Hill. Cleve Hill. How, Cleve. how did they, what was the relationship? Excuse me? What was the relationship between the mother and the other two women? They had a relationship. He had a relationship with all three women at different times. Did you meet Cleve? I knew of him. What do you remember about him? Evil. How did he die? Stomach cancer. Tell me about your mom. Spell her name again for me. Rita. R-E-T-H-A. What do you remember about her? That smile. That smile. Her love for her kids. I just pray we find something. It's been too long. Too long. I've worked on this for over 30 years myself. Myself has been working on this for almost 30 years myself. I've never given up. And I will never give up. So you know for sure that they've recovered your mother? They haven't recovered anything yet. Nothing's been recovered. Basically, they're, they're searching. They dug back in 93. It was 93 when they first did some digging. Nothing came of it. But since there's new technology, they came out and they did find some anomalies in different areas. So this is where we are now with the dig. And they called you because they think it could be you. Could be. Could be. And that's all you've been told? That's all I've been told. And you're one of how, is this your sister as well? That's my sister as well. That's Jack. So she had two daughters? No, actually she had seven kids. She had six girls, one boy. So we're, we're here. We live here. Uh, my dad's still living. He's in North Florida, so I can be him updated as well. And also I have a sister in North Florida. I have a sister in Georgia, I have a sister in Carolina, I have another sister here. So what happened? When did the sheriff's office call you and what did they say? Well, basically, they just told me, you know, they got a tip. And what they were what they were doing. And basically for me to meet them out here. That's it. And I'm here. So We've been here since yesterday. So back in 82, what, what yeah, I'm sure your family talked about what had happened and what you thought of that. What did I think that happened? This is what I think happened. Every woman he gets involved with, I've heard, they try and break off the relationship, they disappear. They just disappear. So I know he had something to do with I know. I know. My mother wrote a letter. It's at the sheriff's department. She wrote a letter stating she was in a relationship with him. She wanted to be with him. For my, for my father to take care of his kids. Us. So I know he had something to do with it. I know it. Just so, like Danielle Johnson, he had something to do with her as well. She ended up missing. It's in her diary. She had a relationship with him. So it's known. Every, everybody in the community knew about it. Everyone. Have you been in any communication with Cleve's family at all? No, I don't. No. Why is that? I have no reason to. None. So for 39 years, your mom has just been missing. No clues whether she was murdered, nothing. Just missing. Nothing. Nothing. What do you make of the sheriff's office almost four decades later possibly solving this? Did you ever thought you'd, you'd be here? I knew I'd get here. Because I stayed home. I knew I'd get here. I need the right here, and I found the right here. And he's listening. He's listening to me. And who's he? Detective Charles, Ron Charles. You did the missing piece with Channel 10 a couple of years ago. Do you think that contributed? I did that a few months ago with Carolina. Do you think that contributed? Yes, it did. How? Getting the word out. Getting the word out. Because it's been sitting too long. She's been sitting in a box for 39 years on the shelf. It's time she come out of that box. It's time for something to be done. It's time. It's too long. <laughs> it's too long. It's too long. And I'm just grateful that we're at this, this point where hopefully we can resolve this. We can solve this. We can close this 
chapter, we can move on to the next. So, if you have any other questions, ask now or discuss with the sheriffs at a later date.
hammer in just to break it up. They took samples off of it. So they're breaking it up now to see what's in it. So they had a little suspicious, I guess. You know, something caught their eye, so they took samples, backed it up. So they did find some concrete or something? A huge there? slab. Yeah, that's weird. That's very unusual to be in the ground like that. Yeah. Um, they found an imprint on it. I guess that's what made them take a sample to see what it is. So right now, the jackhammer is just breaking it up just to see what's inside of it. Mm -hmm. That's where we are now. That's perfect. If I know anything else, I will come back and let you all know. Because I know a, you're patiently waiting over here. Do you have a phone number? I'm, I'm Dana. You got my name yes, right? Yes, Dana. Got it. Hi, Dana. Thank I'm you. Brianna. I'm from Fox 13. Um, we spoke to one of our uh, photographers earlier. Yes. You know, I just want to try and keep everybody off the press for the respect of the pastor. Because yeah. he let me come up here, he let me and my family and friends sit up there, and the officers parked there. So out of respect for him, I just want to keep everybody back. I will keep oh, yeah, you all updated. Trust me. I will keep you all updated. You all have my numbers. You can call me at any given moment. If I don't reach back to you, it's in my pocket. <laughs> but I'm constantly <laughs> looking at no, my phone. Problem. Dan, I'm so, sorry, I just walked up. Can I can I please get your phone? Yeah, you always phone? late. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's, what my I mother, earlier. that's what my mother said. <laughs> oh my God. Basically they just found, like I told everyone else, a huge piece of concrete. Right. It's huge. And that's what the jackhammer is. That's what the jackhammer is for, to break it up to see what's in it. Because they are roughly, I would say, about maybe five, six feet in the ground. Right. It's so weird. And it's so weird for that huge piece to be buried like that. Mm -hmm. So there was one, I guess, detective that was here in 93 that dug. He said they dug in that area. And the question was asked to him, well, did you see this? And he was like, no. So here we are. I'm sorry, man. Can I get your point? Normally, I think yesterday they were going to stay until about 8, until it got dark. But one of the excavators, the wire started burning, so they stopped a little after 6. So normally they're here 7 in the morning. The excavator gets here between 8 and 8.30. They start digging. Okay. So that's the time. If you want to be here, that's when they start. Okay sun up to sundown and you know they have everything roped off the trucks the bus will be here and you came out here yesterday as well i'll be here okay did they start digging yesterday yesterday yes they did i was here until six o'clock dana did they tell you how many days they'll be doing this for up to what point well so far three days so tomorrow one more day um if they have to go further they will go further okay. so Hopefully, because basically they're going to be here. It's in grids. So they're going to start here. They're going to move to another section and then another section. So it might go beyond the three days. So they expect to do the entire property. Not the entire property. Just three sections. Just three sections. That's where they picked up um, some disturbances in the ground, the anomalies. When forensic came out, they did detect some anomalies in the ground. So. They start this section, then it'll be this section, and then this section. Okay? So, like I said, tomorrow, if you want to come out tomorrow, we'll be here tomorrow. If they go any further beyond tomorrow, I will let all of you know. Okay? Thank you. I will definitely keep you updated. But you all got my numbers? Call me anytime. Who's out here with you? Family and friends. All family and friends. We all grew up here. We all know about it. We've all been through it. So, I just got a lot of support back then. A lot of support. So, like I say, when I know more, you'll know. Okay? All right. Thank, Thank you. you. We appreciate you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome.
praying that the families get closure, praying that the families finally get justice. As you heard one of the victims say, Cleveland Hill is no longer alive, so he can't be held accountable for his actions, but hopefully the family gets closure. I'm out here in Largo, Florida, Pinellas County. Everyone be safe. God bless.